Hi, so today I want to speak about leading people. For the last three workshops, we talked about how to set goals, how to develop our mind, and also how to attract success. But these things, they are all personal. And from the fourth workshop, we will more talk about how do we interact with the others. So this is why I want to talk to you about leading people. Um, we all live in the world that we have to interact with the others. So I remember, maybe you also have similar experience having a very bad leader leading your life. When I was working at the fish market in Norway, it was the first summer that I made so much money as a college student, but at the same time, I was being cheated like a machine. I worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, which was fine. But then the manager, he told me basically, um, you have to work that much long hours and your value is determined by how much you sell. So basically today you are required to sell um, maybe 5,000 kronos at that time, which is some money. Um, so I felt like a machine and the, the other people also felt the same way. We felt we are not being cheated like we are a human beings. And in fact, the, as a matter of fact, all of us, we have to reach a target quota. But if the boss at that time, he would say in a different way, or maybe more encouraging, we will feel a lot better. Instead, we feel like we are easily replaceable and all the things we are doing in his eye is just in terms of money. And at the same time, I also have some very good experience when I was working in Egypt. Um, I was working in a supranational bank and um, I worked at the treasury department with the treasurer Chandi. And I really appreciate him because he told me every day at 8 a.m. you just come to my office and then we can talk more about how you can improve. He said, I really want you to learn something. And I think that's the essence. A leader, he really cares about you. And I really appreciate that Chandi, he spent an hour every single day just to talk with me, not about jobs. Sometimes it's about jobs, but a lot of times it's about how can I improve myself? And this is how he cares for people. I'm sure in your life, you must have some good, leaders and some bad leaders. And today we will talk about how do we lead people as a good leader. Because if you are a good leader, you will probably be a great man in the future. And if you think about the history of working, in the past we have this industrial revolution. So when the England, they have this um, kind of steam train and the whole Europe, they turn from agriculture to industrial economy. A lot of things, they are being managed. So we call, we manage production lines, we manage the processes, and we also manage people. Because at that time, what you're doing is basically maybe do some sort of manufacturing job, and you have a quota. Every single hour, you have to do something. So people lead by managing people like they are machines. But that leadership method does not work for now because right now is a new knowledge economy and we are all have our thoughts and for new leaders to succeed in this era you have to lead people like they are real people not like their machine why is obama the president of the united states or why is uhuru kenyatta the president of kenya why is uh, muhammad buhari the president of Nigeria. Is Obama a better, can he do better math than mathematicians or does he know programming better than some of the world-class programmer? Obviously, obviously he does not. He got paid that much, he has that fame because of his exceptional leadership skills. So think about this, if you can lead people, your value might be able to be increased by more than 10 times. Because if you can have 10 people working for you and you help them to achieve their best potential, then your value can be increased by 10 times. You don't have to work on yourself. So that's why this 
fourth leadership workshop about leading people can be scalable. It's not about developing yourself. It's about developing the others so your value can be multiplied by 10 times, a thousand times, or like Barack Obama, a million times. And before going into the topic, I want to talk about two modes of thinking. One mode is about efficiency thinking. And another mode is about understanding thinking. So before we talk about how do we manage our life, we should have a task list or a goal list. In that case, we are thinking in terms of efficiency. We have to do something. There is a list we have to do. And that's thinking through our heart. But in understanding thinking, in terms of leading people, we have to shift from efficiency to understanding, which means we have to shift from thinking on our head to thinking on our heart. You can't put a task list on people. You can't say, I tell you to do so, or I just have 15 minutes for this. You can't really kind of put a task list of people because they are people, they are not things. And in leadership, we have to understand people's strength. I remember a story where a boy, he is very efficient, he's a good manager, and he put all the things on his task list. For example, today he went to the grocery store, he wanted to buy something, so he spent 15 minutes, so that's his task. And then he has to read a book for an hour or so to develop himself. That is another task. But the thing is, he put one task is to pick up his girlfriend for 15 minutes and he put that into his task list so he just went to pick up his girlfriend and say i just have 15 minutes for you and that was catastrophic as you might be able to imagine so just remember when you think about people you can't think of them as efficiency it might be easy to understand but a lot of people they made the same mistake when you are leading people sometimes if you're busy on something you have to back off people are always important than tasks so when you're leading people you have to understand their strengths you can't treat all the people like a machine like they are the same you have to know what makes them tick ask some questions so to show that you're interested in them and this is what i believe is true leadership seek first to understand then to be understood and some people say maybe um, I'll spend too much time when I'm trying to understand the people. So I'll just treat them as if they are the same and as if they're a machine. And of course, in some sort of jobs, you can do that. But for most of the new knowledge jobs that requires their brain to work, you can't do that anymore. Not today. And a lot of people, especially extremely great people, they hate to be managed. They need to have a common vision, need to have a caring leaders so they can go further. And this is something that we all have to take in mind. The second point I really want you to know is that as a leader, you don't try and sell your thing. You seek first to understand, then to be understood. Remember, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I was living in Norway, I shared a kitchen with seven people. And, you know, as we share the kitchen, some people, they might have kind of lower standard than the others in terms of the cleaning. So uh, quite a lot of time, quite often, um, we know there is a guy, a gentleman, he does not um, have the same standard that we might have. So sometimes he does not wash his dishes. Sometimes he leaves things a bit dirty and he does not really kind of um, conform with the other standard. So one of my kitchen mates, he got so angry and he kept um, fighting, kind of arguing with the um, another guy. So at the end, they are not in good terms. But um, when I figure out this problem, I take the active role. I really ask um, the gentleman, um, is there anything I can help you with? Or um, are you busy? So I try to really understand him. So I remember at, at one time, he was supposed to be doing the cleaning job. He was supposed to put, 
put out the trash and he did not do that so I did not really ask you um, why don't you do that I kind of say let's do it together so I say okay I'll take out half and you take out another half and it in that sense he sensed that it was his week to do the cleaning and he did not but I did not really go at him and I leave him some face and at the end we were very happy and we did the whole task together so this is how you lead people and also I remember at one case um, I have been working at change maker in slums for three years and at one time our ground manager she wanted to resign and she kept on telling me um, this job I hate this I don't have enough salary and then I don't he, she kept on seeing a lot of reasons and I have discussed with my team colleagues and they say okay let her resign because we don't need some people who don't who is always complaining but I took a different attitude I try my first to understand her so I call her up and at, at the same time she was telling me a lot of reasonings and I did not say one thing I just trying to listen so after I listen um, it was kind of a miracle so after I listened for an hour I did not say anything and then afterwards she just did not mention anything about resignation I guess the root cause is that she does not feel being respected or she does not feel being understood so after I listened to her even though I don't say anything she felt I'm genuine I want to understand her so a lot of times when you face a problem it's mostly about people maybe if you're trying to really understand them first instead of selling yourself maybe you will find a different way um, a lot of people they talk their way in and talk their way out and I remember at one startup there is a guy called Sebastian and he's always kept talking talking about what he does and what what he wants and at the end of the day when he talks nobody listens and you don't want to really try to impose your own thinking to foster other things and you remember just each people they have their own thinking the thing is we have to try to understand them and then they will try to really care about us and this is what I really believe in and you made a friend by caring how they care even though maybe at the end they don't follow what you think but at least you have a friend and at the same time when I talk about the experience with Chandi in Egypt in fact I forget most of the words that he say but I never forget the way that he cared for me and I think this is what we want to leave an impact in others lives so we want after some years they still remember it is this person who gave me the help I need when I need it the most and at the third thing so at the first point I really talk about efficiency and understanding thinking we have to think in terms of heart instead of head when we lead people the second thing I talked about is we need to try to understand the other people before we speak leaders speak the last and the third thing I want to talk about is how to lead people that are older than you are I'm 25 years old and I have led people who are 10 or 20 years older than me it was it wasn't a very um, it was quite a challenging experience it wasn't very smooth and I'm sure as um, you are going to your or youth you are all have high potential at some point in time you will be leading people who are older than you are and I have three tips so the first one is really to acknowledge the difference be open bring it up in the conversation saying okay hey I know you are older than me I know you have a lot of experience and here is what I think so you are open and you don't try to avoid this conversation a lot of people when they are leading people who are older than they are they try to avoid this confrontation and trying to act as if they are very mature they already know a lot of things but in that case it really shows that you are immature so that is the first thing 
And the second point is to ask for help. Remember, seek first to understand, then to be understood. So perhaps、um, sometimes I just go to someone who are older and have more experience than me. I say, and hey, I know you're older than me. You have a lot more experience, and obviously I'm still young. I'm still learning, and I think in this. Or in that area, you might be able to provide me more insights, and I'd love to learn more about what you think about this. So when you acknowledge a difference and ask for help, they will be able to see that you respect them, and they will be willing to to really share their views, and they are taking you as a friend, not an enemy. Because for you can imagine for a people older, twenty years older than you, being led by you. Maybe sometimes they feel this guy know nothing. When I was twenty, he was just a kid, and so by acknowledging the difference and ask for help, you can really create a good relate working relationship with people older than you are. And the third point is basically create mutual respect. As long as you respect them, they will respect you back. And maybe at first it might be challenging. Maybe they. Might have a different feelings about you, but I can guarantee you, as long as you keep respecting them, they will respect you. So these are the few things I really want you to take in mind in terms of leading people. Think in terms of the understanding. Think in terms of your heart. It is not like the previous three workshops where we have to think in efficiency, think in our head. So this is. A very different mind shifting work you have to do, and seek first to understand, then to be understood. Don't try to speak. Don't try to talk your way in and talk your way out. Let the other people speak. And if you try practicing just this one principle, your life will be changed. And the third thing about leading people older than you are: acknowledge the difference, ask for their help, and trying to create mutual respect. So. Just to end this, I want you to really think about a situation last week or last month where you met someone new. What did you do? Did you try to impress them by saying how good you are, or did you try to listen and let them to say how good you are, how good they are? Because when you are, if you are trying to sell yourself, maybe they will be impressed, but at the end you won't be able to make a friend. I remember at one networking event, I just sat there and listened for an hour. And afterwards, the next day, this lady she told the other people, Chong is a really fantastic conversationalist. But I said nothing because I let her speak. I tried to see first to understand, then to be understood. So this is the magic. And the second thing I want you to do is to go practice active listening. Trying to listen to the others before you speak. So trying to do this for one time, pick one person and write an example for that the next week. It's my pleasure to really share my principle of how to lead people to you this time, and I look forward to seeing you another time. This is Chong, and good day.